Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeff. If you're a Christian entrepreneur like me, you know how important it is to build our businesses on the foundation of God's Word. That's why I wrote my new devotional, Navigating Entrepreneurship Through the Lens of Scripture, a 30-day journey for Christian entrepreneurs. And I wanted to let you know that it's now available on Amazon. And you can also check it out at navigatingbiblicalentrepreneurship.com forward slash devotional. Welcome to Business God's Way podcast. My name is Jeff Elder, and I'm an online business coach, Christian leader, and funnels expert. This show is where we help established Christian online coaches create more income, freedom, and impact while keeping God at the center of everything we do as entrepreneurs and leaders. Let's dive into today's episode. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another Friday episode of Business God's Way. If you remember, we are taking these Fridays and we are taking a walk through the book of Proverbs and we're specifically addressing leadership principles that we can pull straight from the book of Proverbs. Last week, we talked about the leader's priority to God and how that relationship between the leader and God is the very first priority that must take place in a leader's life. It is the utmost importance. It is the most important relationship that the leader can have. And from that relationship with the Lord, which is the beginning of fear, by the way, is to have this awe and this respect of God. And that carries out in the leader's life. And everything that he does or she does. And today we're going to continue looking into the book of Proverbs. And today we're going to look at the leader's priority to family. To family. Now, if I'm being really honest, I hesitated doing this episode because in full transparency, I'm not married, nor do I have children. And so I, I hesitated wanting to hop on and share this episode with you today. But here's the thing that I came to, and I think through prayer and just seeking the Lord in this, the thing is that I would be doing a disservice to this topic if I didn't at least bring to attention this idea of the leader's responsibility and priority to number one, their spouse, and number two, their children. Because scripture is very clear about the leader's responsibility to both their marriage and to their children. And so while I don't have a whole lot of practical things that I can bring to the table, I do feel led to at least bring to your attention these topics and these ideas and to read through the book of Proverbs as it relates to marriage and children, and then just allow the Lord to do the rest, right? So I'm hopefully the person that God can use today to bring you to the water, to bring you to the word. And then I'm just, I've just been praying that he would take over from there, that he would... Um, provide what needs to be provided in each of your situations very uniquely. And so that's what I decided to do in this episode is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you and tell you what the Bible says about these topics. And then I'm gonna pray that you go on your own 
and pray through these. And if you need to find somebody who is married, who does have a family, to come alongside of you and to help you through some of these things we're going to talk through. So I'm going to ask that you give me permission to at least open the Word of God and to bring these scriptures to, um, to your attention. The second thing I want to say as a preface to all of this, this is the book of Proverbs, and it is a son, it is a father given instruction to his son. And so that's how we're going to cover this topic today. But I want to just emphasize that, first of all, women can absolutely be leaders. And there have been some amazing female leaders, spiritual leaders in my life. So I don't want anybody to feel that because I'm coming at this from more of a male perspective, it's only because the verses um, addresses a son and a father conversation around these topics. And that, of course, not just a male's leader, um, not only is, is it a um, priority of a male's leader to his wife and children, if they have children, but also scripture is very clear that the wife is also supposed to place her husband and children first as well. So I just wanted to mention this because I didn't want anybody to think that I was singling out men and, and male leadership and um, that women are not called to the same standard, to the same calling of, of place and priority on their marriage and children. So I wanted to kind of address that up front. So today we're going to be looking at two things. We're going to be looking at the priority of marriage for the leader and the priority of children for the leader. And we're going to start with marriage. And I'll have some things to say to single people here too, because I, I think this we can pull some some truth from this this passage in Proverbs five, and we can apply it to to single people as well. And as a single person myself, even though I'm not married, I still think what this passage teaches is so relevant to me and my leadership. And for me as a single person, yes, my priority isn't a spouse or kids because I don't have either of those. But here's the thing for single people. Our priority is to purity. Let me say that again. As a single person, our priority is purity. And I think when we start messing around with some of the things that this father is going to bring up to a son in Proverbs, we have to be so careful because we can be just as tempted, if not more so sometimes, as single people to engage in sexual relationships outside of marriage. So I don't want single people to tune out here because there's a lot that we can learn from um, from chapter 5 from the book of Proverbs. So let's kind of kick off and dive into chapter 5. And what's interesting is um, this is a very dynamic chapter. It is a very um, personal and very intimate conversation that this writer of Proverbs is having with his son. It is instructions that this father is providing. And what I believe Solomon is, is saying here is that he is prohibiting his son 
to have or to engage in sexual activity outside of marriage. And so we dig into chapter 5, starting at verse, verse 1. It says, My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep distress, discretion, and your lips may God knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as a wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. So what Solomon here is doing is he's saying, look son, keep your priority to your wife. Don't allow the seduction of an adulteress to tempt you into engaging in sexual relationships apart from your marriage. And what's interesting is the language here. He says that the adulteress has lips that drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. These are very attractive features. These are pleasant features. And what he's saying is they will look very enticing to you, my son. They will look very enticing to you. She is tempting. You will be tempted. So, son, take heed. Understand what I'm saying. And don't be lured into this kind of extra marital relationship. He says, because, and he gives a very stark contract, contrast here. He, he says, basically, yeah, she may look good. She may be pleasing to the eye. And her lips may drip honey. And she may be smoother than oil. But understand that if you engage in this relationship, it is bitter. It will be bitter. And it will be as painful as someone literally taking a sword out of your back. So you get this contrast? It's enticing. It looks amazing. And yet it's something that could lead to death. So he says, my son, do not, do not be lured by that kind of a relationship. You see, adulterous relationships lead to death. Now, if you're single here, the same thing can be true for us, right? We can be enticed by somebody that we find attractive. We can be enticed by this sexual temptation it's gonna feel good it's gonna make me feel good but the thing is it doesn't it, it doesn't you know to have some vulnerability here I know that speaking from personal experience this happened a while ago but I fell into this trap I fell into this trap and it wasn't good. It didn't feel good. It hurt. There was pain involved. Now imagine a married um, person, right? Now you're, you're impacting somebody that you made a commitment with. You made vows to. It's painful. It's it's very messy. But here's the good news is that there's grace. 
and there's repentance and and so if we are being tempted or we have maybe fallen into temptation we have a savior who loves us and all we have to do is confess that sin to him and there is forgiveness there there is restoration but as the this father gives this wisdom to his son and says it's better to just not go there that is something that we need to um, to t to heed as well and as a leader as a spiritual leader we need to do everything we can as single people as married people we need to make sure that if you're married that you are making your priority to your spouse and as a single person i'm making my priority to purity that i i don't want to fall in this area i don't want you to fall if you're single or married just stay away that's the best thing we can do is stay far away from this temptation and this is exactly what solomon or this father is saying to his son so basically what he is saying is be committed to one thing be committed to one person and what's interesting is in chapter 5 verse 16 of uh, uh, verse 15 through 16 it says drink water from your own cistern flowing water from your own well uh, flowing water from your own well should your should your springs be scattered abroad streams of water in the streets what's going on here and I and I did some study on this and it's really fascinating and what Solomon is saying to his son here is is your you my son need to be committed to sexual fidelity and he uses these metaphors of water and cisterns and wells and springs as this illustration and why are these metaphors so powerful here because in the in in the time in these bible times in the mid you know the middle eastern countries water and rivers and streams and wells were very precious they're very precious because they're very hard to come by water was not easy to come by it was very it was very precious and basically what solomon is saying is don't don't pursue what you already have because what you have is precious it is so precious it's like water it's like springs and basically what he's saying here in verse 16 should your springs be scattered abroad streams of water in the streets basically what he's saying is if you go around sleeping with everybody outside of marriage you just throw in this precious water on the streets of the city that is what you're doing my son but instead of doing that stay committed to your wife he says in verse 17 let them be for yourself alone not for strangers right so there's this precious language being used here of water and cisterns and springs to make the point that fidelity is so important 
Hold tight to the precious gift that ye have. That gift of marriage, that gift of purity. Don't go committing adultery. Don't go having sexual relations outside of marriage because it's like you are wasting this precious water. You are literally taking cups of water and just dumping it on the ground. And so I love this illustration. I love what this conveys here. Water was premium. It was extremely valuable. And what's going on here is in verse 15 again, he's saying, protect it. Protect this water. Protect this relationship. Don't throw it away. So this, this conclusion then that we can come with here is that the man, this boy, his wife, that is his first priority. This is the priority of marriage itself, whether you're a husband or a wife. Your first priority is to your spouse. If you're single, your first priority is, um, yeah, to God, but then it's to purity, to remain pure and not allow yourself to be enticed. Why is this so important for leaders? Why is this so important because here's the thing successful leaders whether they're Christian or not value their commitments successful leaders value their commitments they are people who keep their promises they keep their word and marriage is a commitment that they've made. And for single people, hopefully purity is a commitment that you made. And it is so important for the leader to set their priority on their marriage or on being pure. There's an author his last name is Blackaby, and he says this. He says, why is the leader's spiritual life so important? Some people claim leaders who commit adultery can still lead their organizations effectively. They argue that one does not affect the other. The issue, however, is integrity. If a man can deceive his wife, or let's just throw in there, if a man or woman can deceive their spouse and children, break a vow he made to God in the presence of witnesses and knowingly betray the trust of those who love him, what guarantee does his organization have that he will be honest, as he, honest in his dealings with them? People who prove themselves deceitful in one area of life are equally capable of being deceitful in other areas. Wow. Right? So if a leader can't keep their commitments, if a leader can be deceitful in this area of their life, what other areas of their life will be impacted by that as well? If they're not being honest with their most important relationship, which is their marriage, then what's to say that they're not being dishonest in other areas? And it really comes down to a trust issue. And a spiritual leader must make their priority to their spouse, their foundation of their ministry and leadership. 
Now, I want to say this again. I know this is tough stuff, but I, I believe this is this is where we need to go with this. But remember, there's forgiveness and there's grace. All you have to do is repent, seek forgiveness. God will forgive. God will restore you. There may need to be a lot of work that happens, but I believe God is in the business of restoring us after a fall like this. You see, God doesn't disqualify us. He may have to discipline us. He may have to correct us. He may have to take us through a season where we have to make things right. But no matter what, he is there and he loves us and he forgives us. And what happens to the leader who does not heed these words? We see this in Proverbs 5, 21 through 23. For a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. He dies for lack of discipline, and because of his great folly, he is led astray. Those are some pretty tough words. For those that don't heed this advice that this father is given to his son, for those that lack the discipline to stay committed, to keep their spouse as a priority, or as a single person, to keep purity their priority, it says they are in danger of great folly and being led astray. We don't want to do that. We don't want to be leaders like that. We want to heed <coughs> this instruction that this father is given to his son. So, husbands, wives, stay devoted, stay committed to your marriage. Single people, stay committed, stay devoted to purity. Especially if you're a leader. Leaders, this is so important. This is what we're called to as leaders. This is what we're called to as children of God. I think I'm going to stop there. I was going to try to do the second part, but I'm going to break this up into two parts, I think. So next week, we're going to talk about children and the leader's responsibility to their children. So <clears throat> I'm going to end there for the day, and I pray that this message today spoke to somebody. And I pray that, again, you would go back to these scriptures and you would wrestle with them yourself. And if you need accountability or you need somebody to come alongside of you because maybe you're facing a temptation right now, I invite you to, to reach out to somebody who's a trusted friend, somebody who's married, somebody that you can ask in and be open and honest and transparent with them about where you're at. Because trust me, from my own slip as a single person, I know the stakes are even higher for married people. And th that's not a pain that you want to go through. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So get the help now. Seek the Lord on this. That's what I have for you guys today. I pray that these words that I spoke today would be words that God spoke through me. 
and that somebody who needed to hear this today would hear and that God would intervene in such a huge way. Because my prayer is that I want us to be the leaders that God can use to make an impact in this world. That we can be the leaders that he's called us to be in our business and in our communities and in our world. That is why we spent time talking through the leader's priority to God and we're talking now about the leader's priority to family. All right, guys, that is it for today's episode. God bless you guys. I'm praying for you guys. I love you guys. And as always, continue to do business God's way.